Should I wait till this goes live? No. <laughs> Mic check, mic check. It's Thursday. It's 5 o'clock. You're watching Tony and Chelsea Live, where we teach you all about editing photos and composition and the photo basics by reviewing your photos. So if you haven't already, make sure that you submit your wildlife photos. And you can do that by going to the link sdp.io slash submit. So we'll get to those photos shortly. And the theme this week is wildlife, and please just submit one. Mm. Tony, what yeah. else do we have going on? I, you want to just go look at a few pictures? And no, actually, I don't, because this show is brought to you by us. And I wanted to plug our flash guide. If you don't know how to use flash, it's an easy way to make your photos exponentially better. And we even shot the cover using flash with gels. We'll teach you how to do that. We'll teach you how to manually adjust your flash, how to add lighting. You can see our niece here, Maya, looking better with flash and you can get 15 percent off with the coupon code live 15 just go to our store northrop.photo thank you for your support i also wanted to take a moment to introduce our producer frank denardi hi frank hey everybody back again let's let's do good today <laughs> it's chaos over there for frank so be kind he's going to be taking your questions and comments and relaying them to us so if you have any let frank know I want to thank everybody for their patience last week. We dealt with a whole bunch of technical issues because it was our first time streaming in four years. And I spent a lot of this week like fixing those. So if we do have problems, write a comment and Frank's trying to keep track of it. Maybe we can fix it in real time. We'll get a lot of problems this week, but we'll get a little bit better every week. It's just going to be just getting a little bit better every week. Just like your photos will get a little bit better every week. Do you remember for our first live show, when we first started, every time we saw a picture, we were like, level the horizon, crop, yeah. learn the rule of thirds. And like a few years in, we were like, holy crap, they're really good. They got good. I want to look at people's pictures, Charles. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. I think we got like 350 pictures. So I hope we get to yours. May the odds be in your favor. Okay. Lightroom is not being great for me today. Okay. We have... Olive Baboon by Rory Wymore. This is one of my favorite things to do, but we need to look at the histogram here and you see how it's all in the middle and there's nothing in like the left half or the right third. We, one way to do that is to increase the contrast and just watch the histogram. Increasing the contrast just spreads it out. Another way to do that is to raise the whites and lower the blacks and those both do the same thing. They spread the histogram out and just generally make it contrast here. That helps a lot. I also have this thing with people and nature where I love the colors to make more sense. And so you can see that his fur is a little bit cool, which makes it look cold. And that's okay if that's the look you're going for. But you can also play with the colors in the photo. And, you know, Lightroom's gotten so good because you can actually go to this. Can they see what I'm doing on the screen? Yes, they can. Yeah. Select your subject. Come on. And then you can selectively change the colors or change the exposure. And so I'll just add a bit of magenta and a little bit of warmth and uh, try to get the color balance right. But that's also a really cool way to just make your subject pop. And with wildlife, I like to select my background too and like lower the exposure a little bit. And now you can make the foreground pop. Just some tips. Just some fast. Good way to draw attention to the subject by adding contrast. Oh, this picture is beautiful. Dave Renwald. I'm going to give you a pick. People don't know what giving somebody a pick is. It's just the highest form of flattery yeah, that we can offer. We like it. And so much we're going to press this P button on the keyboard. And sometimes we do five stars in a pick, and that means we have to press two buttons. So that's a big deal. Uh, what are you doing? It's, it's, not, it's not doing what I want it to do. Well... That's life. Let's go to library first. There we go. So some things I like about this photo are the composition. You left all this negative space, but all of the grass is blowing towards the coyote, and it makes it look really cool. This is a beautiful composition. I don't know why. It's only like 500 pixels high. You know what, Tony? I think that's the problem I was having zooming in. This also ruins our histogram rule. It's not spread out on the histogram, but it works. And obviously you have to use some judgment there, but I like that the snow is blown out and I like that you have all of this negative space with the white and then 
the coyote and the grass is up color. So I think it works, Dave. Five stars in a pick. Oh, another high key photo. This time a snowy owl. I actually feel like we could get rid of some of the negative space, right? Like I like some amount of negative space, but we're cropping you, Andre. <laughs> yeah, sorry about you. Your just got mark. north cropped. <laughs> he got north crop. You're, but I like to change the aspect ratio too when I north crop. Oh, don't crop into that read though. Either you need to go. Oh, you can't. Uh oh. No, you gotta I check the edges, okay? On the left side there, you cropped into that read, I guess and I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. I guess I'm just an anarchist in this family. Great shot. I love that people are getting out in the snow. Ooh, another Frank, Frank Abbott. This is. I don't know if we're looking at the head or the are. butt. I oh, think it's the head, it, but it's like underwater. Yeah. Okay, that's really compelling. I, I like that shot a lot. Beautiful composition. That's very cool. I'm gonna try it in black and white since. It's kind of abstract to begin with. Mm, that works too. Do you hear our dog? We, it's our all dog day. has the worst bark. It's a, it's amazing that we're not in sand by now. Okay. What do I do? Oh my gosh, crab on dock. I've never seen a crab romanticized like this. Have you? It looks <laughs> I, like he's looking at the sunset. I really like the creative grading here, but as a rule, if I don't have eye contact, like either in a direct profile crab? or the, the animal looking at me I say I didn't get the shot what you want to look into the crab's eyes I prefer to not see the crab's eyes have you seen crab eyes <laughs> okay here's a pelican look at the histogram there you see like this whole side isn't used so we're just gonna raise the whites here and right away we're not losing any detail but the whole thing just becomes a little bit brighter Tony you're missing the crux of the issue and that's that the subject is being it's being distracted by the background. And so I'm gonna just totally crop down because I don't, I don't care about these pillars. Yeah, wildlife photographers, we crop a lot. It doesn't matter how big your lens is. You're not getting close enough, right? You always gotta crop. Frank, you ever crop? No, he's never cropped. <laughs> <laughs> I would consider myself to be, with my wildlife photos, uh, I crop as much as I can. Because like Tony, like you just said, you can never get close enough. It's very hard for those animals to come close to you. So uh, yes, I use cropping to my advantage. And even though I'm only shooting with 33 megapixels on my a7 IV and my a9 at 24 megapixels, uh, I'll still get a decent amount out of that. Man, if Moose Buderson were here, he'd slap you right in the yeah, mouth. Yeah, you would be done, Frank. <laughs> Definitely go back and watch our live show with Moose Peterson. Okay, this preening pelican, I want to show you what I did here to make this picture pop, 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 pop. Do you see how I selected the background and then I dropped the exposure so it's darker? And then I selected the subject and I brought up the whites and the texture so that it looks sharper and brighter. I also cropped so that you're not seeing so much background since Honestly, that wasn't the beautiful part of the picture. And that's just some tips that you could take into consideration for life. Great job, Bone. And good job, Chelsea. I like those edits. I love to collaborate with the people. Oh, James. Speaking of a nice tight crop, I really like this. Filled the frame, but the cropping isn't too uncomfortable. Like you cropped into the subject, which feels better than leaving like an awkward amount of space. Settings look really good, nice and sharp. I, I, I like it. I'm going to just bring up the whites a little bit just to get uh, like a more sheen in the fur and also I think this one could work really well as a black and white mm, and if work. you really texture it up with black and white then you get that look like like you could put this you could print this with an inspirational quote courage takes time or something like that <laughs> I don't know I'm not inspirational Jim Setzer it's so lovely to have you back yeah I'm so happy to see Jim in there this is a gorgeous photo it is, and look what he did. He selected the background and he changed the greens to a cooler green. I see what you did there, Jim. And I also see that you brought out some colors in this female, perhaps juvenile cardinal. I mean, she looks a little, she looks a little underdeveloped in life, not from your photography. Uh, I just used a little brush there and just added a little bit of exposure to the eye because I liked all the contrast in the scene. I didn't want to broadly raise the shadows. Oh, sorry. Jim, I'm giving you a pic. Ch Chelsea's busy watching her own live show. Well, I'm actually looking at the comments because I see Kyle Wolf, I see Erilyn, Smackjacks. I see so many familiar faces. It makes me, familiar names rather, yeah, it makes I, me happy. I wish I could be in the comments. Mike DeRose, are you the person that in the comments who said they noticed we love kingfishers? Because we do, so you got us. They're cracking the code. So they are, are are white whale. They're they very difficult. Mysterious. I can shy. give you some constructive feedback here. 
the exposure, it's a little overexposed. And with wildlife photography so frequently, you have to shoot raw, but also dial in a stop or sometimes two stops of negative exposure compensation. This is a high dynamic range animal. And yeah. when you are taking pictures of something like a kingfisher or an osprey or a bald eagle, you have to expose for their white feathers. Otherwise they get blown out and you lose the detail. It happens to me, it happens to the best of them. Does it happen to you, Frank? Happens to me a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I like to shoot ospreys like you guys too, with a, a lot of white, and depending on what the background can be, and even bald eagle heads sometimes. Uh, so yeah, it definitely happens to me. I want to give a, a couple comments. We have Omar. Uh, Omar was checking in. He said thanks a lot. You helped out a lot with the uh, A74 uh, review to help him learn how to use it. Oh, and ah Ahmed uh, said the moose comedy or the the moose video was comedy gold. Was really and funny. also Brand Brandon said moose was awesome. Not. Nah. Not. Oh, not. Moose was awesome. Oh, not. It's, it's, it's like a Larry David live show. <laughs> like, it's the most uncomfortable thing for I thought us. it was kind of cool. We got comments about that live show oh, for we years. we still do, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Put it in the top five. Okay. Great shot, Mike. Let's move on to... Oh my goodness. Herman von Lahr. I, I love this moment. And this is what wildlife photography is all about. Like, just keep shooting and waiting for that one special moment. And this fox is absolutely gorgeous. Your settings, one four hundredth. That's perfect. Uh, great job. It's so beautiful. And and I want to point out, he's not using expensive gear. A D ninety is a pretty old DSLR, and then he's just got a zoom on there. But look at that gorgeous shot. You get a pick. You get five stars. You get two key presses. And also, while we're talking about the fact that he's not using expensive gear and he's using a DSLR. One of our topics of discussion for the show is whether or not you are shooting with a DSLR or mirrorless for wildlife and why and why not. I know a lot of people are hesitant to make the switch and so I'm kind of curious about where all of you stand. I, I've been mirrorless for a while because we're fortunate enough to be able to shoot with like the flagship gear. Yeah. And a lot of people haven't moved over for that reason. It was the last type of photography that I recommended switching for because it was so dependent on telephoto autofocus and really fast viewfinders but it was finally like uh, I think the A1 and the R5 were the cameras where I was like okay now it's like narrowly better than a DSLR mostly because of the silent shooting. The silent shooting can make such a big difference in some situations. But I do feel like at this point a lot of the brands have not just their flagship cameras are capable of handling the autofocusing yeah. required for wildlife. So I'm curious to know what you think. I think the gear is still pretty expensive. So if I weren't doing this as a profession, I might just wait till things were used and get a better deal. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Jeff. Jeff, this photo is amazing. Jeff, I'm jealous, Jeff. Wow. And again, he's shooting with a, a D7100 and APS-C DSLR with a Tamron third-party lens, and this is fantastic. He's Pick. down low. Like, Jeff definitely had to get uncomfortably low. He got low, and, and it was uncomfortable. That's one of the biggest tips with wildlife photography is often I'm laying on the ground because you're going to show more depth with these, like if it's a, an animal on the ground or on the surface of the water. Yeah, yeah. Pick for you. He got some background blur by being low, which gives him uh, subject separation, so... I, we don't have these here. A Red Kite by Richard Williams. Wow, they're pretty. Yeah, this picture is beautiful. It's really cool. Um, and to capture that, to keep that in the frame, and the camera, to get that in autofocus, all of that worked out perfect. Your 1 hundredth is about as slow as you could go. Great job. These, these are excellent. I don't know why Lightroom is not rendering every picture. That's not a wildlife picture. Oh, wait, go back. Wow. <laughs> That's you. I didn't even touch the keyboard. You're out of control, Chelsea. I'm out of control. I don't know what you're drinking, but... It's nothing. It's none of your business. Oh, this is Kyle Wolf. This is Damn, Kyle. we almost skipped Kyle's. Oh, oh. look at this little I mean, moment. absolutely gorgeous, Kyle. Do you see the baby? Wow, really cool. And I like your interesting editing. I will say a tip for wildlife is that it's very common for people to go very literal and realistic for wildlife photos and I think there's something fun about playing with the processing and glamming it up and adding some different colors and Kyle did that here. I'm gonna give Kyle a pick and that's not just because he's one of my favorite people. Okay. Remember when people used to get mad because we like Kyle Wolf so much? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry Kyle. <laughs> okay we have Bruce's picture or perhaps Bruce is the name of this fine animal. We'll never know. 
I like that he did an interesting crop, mm -hmm. but I think that we need like uh, a little definition of what's going on. I think black and white could work for that. And then we could use some editing um, to kind of select important elements of the photo. So maybe like take a brush and bring out the nose and the head a little bit, but very cool crop, very interesting, Bruce. Uh, Frank, do we have any questions or comments or anything over there? Yeah, I've got some stuff down. Manny, Manny Ortiz is in the chat. Oh, uh, so yeah, Manny, big fan. Never met you, but hope to someday. I watch a lot of your videos. Uh, Ski Aloha chimed in and said he just recently went from a Nikon D7000 to a Sony A92. Um, so I'm familiar with that system. I use a, the original A9, so congrats on that. It's quite the upgrade there. And Kathy, um, sorry, Kathy, I didn't get your last name in there, but she just went from a DSLR to the Nikon Z50, and she's loving her upgrade. Oh, good. That's, good. that's so nice to hear. And um, Aloha, I forgot your full name, but I saw that you were asking about us doing a local meetup. And it's funny you say that because I've been considering it. We've done photo walks before. So if any of you would be interested in meeting up in Connecticut, I don't know how many people are in Connecticut, maybe like two, six, <laughs> but we could still meet up. Could be, worth could be really that. fun. Okay. Neil Greenhall has this beautiful picture of a heron. Yeah, it was underexposed. I'm raising the whites. Herons are tough because they do have those whites, and so you would want to underexpose it. But then in post, you, you drag that back up. 1 640th, your settings are great. I, I think it's, yeah, I think this is great. I think the thing about herons is it's good to get a shot like this, but then you always keep trying to outdo yourself by going back, by waiting for that moment, which is them with the fish in their beak, right? Well, and that, that takes a lot of patience. You gotta be out there for hours sometimes. Sometimes they're catch a fish over and over and over again and you're just snapping shots. Sometimes you gotta wait hours and they do nothing or they hit the water, but that's what wildlife photography is all about. It's like the patience. It's really about, pa well, I think you have to really uh, love the process yeah. because you have to, it's a numbers and odds game and kind of a luck thing and and sometimes you get the amazing shot and sometimes you don't but you have to always love the experience i think i also want to say you might actually want to be at like 1 2500th here because you you need to be ready for that amazing shot where it's grabbing the fish and the fish is like throwing water everywhere and when it actually grabs the fish stuff becomes very hectic and that's why you need to be prepared for the best possible shot by using a fast shutter speed in this specific situation. So let's actually talk about settings for a second because with wildlife, I like to be in shutter priority. Mm -hmm. And when you put it in shutter priority, I also like to put it in auto ISO and that's gonna select the lowest possible ISO for your shot and get as little noise as possible. And why I do that is because when I'm taking wildlife photos, I don't know when there's going to be action or when an animal is going to be still. I prepare for action, so I like to keep my shutter speed faster. But if the animal is still or perched, I can quickly just dial down my shutter speed. And that means that the ISO is going to go lower and everything else. So there's so many ways to take pictures, but I really like uh, the shutter priority and selecting the slowest shutter speed possible. Speaking of camera settings, I had to do something really, really painful for me for this live show, Chelsea. What? We're shooting this at f8. Well, I know it, it's because I move around so much. It, it I can't be tamed. We can't I, be in the same focal plane, it turns out. So I can't. I have an f12 lens and I'm shooting it at f8. Well, you picked the wiggliest wife and that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mads Hildy. Well, a macro <sighs> wild. I guess it's technically wildlife. This is gorgeous. Look Ooh. at these lashes. Let's call this a jumping spider or a wolf uh, spider? It's a wolf spider. It's really beautiful. I'm. Um, Mads, if you're in the chat, can you tell us if this was actually in wildlife? Oh, no, it's not. You took, I see all these, uh, like the reflection in the eyes. It looks like it's in a studio. Well, not necessarily because I have videos where I show like building a whole complex oh. flash rig on your macro lens. Yeah, because I see to... the sky. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So I've definitely done this on the go and that that's beautiful and the colors are perfect five stars end a pick yeah and definitely. I, I do think we should have a segment called photo forensics where we try to guess what's happening and people tell us if we're right or wrong <laughs> yeah we kind of do that compulsively anyway actually we were just at a museum and we saw a photo exhibit and i swear i think it was ai i think it was partially fake do you know what i'm talking about in boston and the depth of field did not make sense oh yeah yeah like I remember that. things in the foreground were blurrier we're all suspicious now, though, since the advent of AI. We're oh, all no. looking at everything a little side-eye. 
Neil, this picture is amazing. Neil, and this is what I was talking about. I'm jealous like, of you. Getting a good sharp picture of an animal is good, but the next level up from that is getting it doing something interesting. And I promise Neil had to spend so many hours, days, weeks, months, years. Tell us how many shots you took until you got this shot. What if Neil, this shot's amazing. What if Neil's like five? This is taken on my smartphone. I would <laughs> cry. I would sob. Can I make a suggestion here? Adobe now has this amazing feature called denoise, and it's going to, I can't do it right now. But if I could do that, it would look much better, and it would, it would give you a lot of sharpness while solving this. I wish we could have your camera settings. But Pick. Great job. Oh, oh, Tommy this... Papa, you're back. First of all, thanks for returning to the show. I saw you were here last week. I appreciate your support. And this photo is called, Did You Get My Good Side? And I, I think you did it. I like to do the most annoying thing, which is to peek, peek into in the, the shadows. shadows. I, I love that you pick. set it up for the contrast. Great work. Five stars in a pick. You took a subject that people sometimes think is overdone and boring, swans, because they're in public spaces, and you made it art. That is just gorgeous. Again, I'm just looking at the histogram. I don't need to even look at the picture. I know i got to raise the whites and just get some contrast out of it. Some people are going to be uncomfortable with this, this whole cycle of life thing. And yeah, I'm weirded out about it too. It, <laughs> it feels terrible, right? But that is what wildlife photography is. You're going to witness a lot of awful, heartbreaking things. I want to go on safari, cooler? but I know I'm going to cry in front of everybody. Oh. Because they eat each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is great. I, you have such a sharp picture, so much resolution here. You could even go like 8x10 vertical like you might for Instagram. And uh, Oh, you can even go tighter than that. You know, like what is the subject of the story? It's not the field in the background. It's not the feathers. It's like, it's like this. I and actually that, don't like that. I'm uncomfortable. It's like when you, it's like when you uh, are cheering. Are you uncomfortable with this? <laughs> no. I disagree with the crop of the last one. Oh. Well, what you got, Frank? Oh. I wanted to chime in <clears throat> that last photo right there of that looked like a red-tailed hawk with a mouse. Yeah. There's a guy who got extremely close. He only shot that at 270 millimeters. So oh, you, I didn't even in, in, that, in that wild, rare case, he didn't even need to stretch all the way out to 500 on that. And that was also shot on, a, I think, a D5500. With the 200 to 500, it was. I'm noticing a lot of DSLRs in the metadata and lots of Nikons, too. Oh, That's yeah. a really good thing to point out, Frank, because we talk about going mirrorless, but you really can get amazing gear like at good deals if you go to DSLR and get older lenses mm -hmm. and stuff. And, okay, the thing with going mirrorless with that many frames is that you might get more usable shots, but they're not really better per se than something taken with the DSLR. So if you put in the time and the effort, you're going to get excellent shots anyway. Jeremy, if you're in the chat, I'd love to hear, like, how did you get that close? That's because, his pet mouse. Well, he might have been in a blind. He might have actually put an animal out. People do bait. Uh, it's controversial. But I'd be curious. It's controversial. This is controversial too, but this, <laughs> this is, is how salty. baby birds are made. Um, well... But it, it's actually a gorgeous picture. I love the warmth of the color of the birds versus like this cool green background. I think the colors are gorgeous. Of course, it's interesting. You're getting interesting animal behavior. I give it five stars and a pick. Let's go. Um, Aaron Johns, I, this is like a classic picture. Mm -hmm. I think that I would just bring up the highlight in the eye a little bit and i'm doing a bit of a sloppy job because you know we're trying to move along here but that just kind of brings out the subject's eye but nice nice photo okay frank did you have any more questions or comments from people uh yeah we have i got a couple things here uh eric there he says he's interested in buying the z6 three i believe he said three maybe he's thinking about what's coming out but he said it might not be the specs he's looking for so he'll probably go with a d850 which as we all know is an amazing camera i still think it's an amazing camera yeah. there's more than four or five people here from connecticut they say yes to a connecticut meetup uh akel is still on his first camera a nikon d5600 um, both Dakota and John Drummond say that 
auto ISO has been a lifesaver for them. Yeah, it really is. And uh, Neil said, thanks for sharing his pick. I'm not sure which one it was, but you're welcome. And also yeah, people you. people ask several times, can we still upload photos? Yes, you can still up your, upload the photos. We're going to re-import uh, in a little while. Yeah. Yeah. During the live show is the best time because your odds are higher because we have like 400 pictures to go through that were uploaded before the show. We give special preference to those of you who are watching. And we're about to re-import too. Here's a picture of an owl. This is great. I'm a little uncomfortable with the crop though. Like, don't you feel like that's in an uncomfortable place? Like either I'd like to see the entire bird or I would just like crop a little more deeply so it feels deliberate. I really love the color contrast of the yellow and the blue. And if you haven't studied color theory for photography, I always am pushing people to do it. I think it might be the least sexy subject because everyone feels like they already understand colors. But it's a really easy way to make your photos way more impactful. And you can see that with these bright golden eyes in the blue background. It's really pretty. Pit. Bob, get that shutter speed down though. One two thousandths, that's good for a flying bird, but it's a perch bird. I want to see you at like one two hundredth, and then you could be at ISO 160. You'd have so much more detail with that A7R4. He might have been waiting for it to fly, but I'll, when I have a shutter priority on, I'm like, oh, they're still. Go down, go down to one five hundredth, and then they start, before they fly, if they start doing that little crunch where they might fly, then I'm blasting it back up to one two thousandth. Yeah, it's so much work just trying to get that shutter speed. I screw it up all the time, so don't feel bad. We screw up. Looking we at Chris's up. photo here, this is gorgeous. We caught an interesting moment. It's going for something. I wish I could see whatever it was going for, but I know you can't control that. Perfect exposure, like we see the detail in the snow. The action is captured. Fantastic. So you get a pick. You get a pick, Christina. Very cool. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so cute, Whitney. Um, I love the little smile. Yeah, it's nice and it's peaceful. I like it. I think I'd crop out the water in the foreground just because um, we already have that context in the background. It's really cute. Good work. Oh, piggyback ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really cute. If you could get lower, that would make it that much more compelling. I'll probably say that more during this show, but often you want to get lower you want to get at eye level with the animal like this shot kind of demonstrates whoa like Joe this Nichols. is eye level and that's what makes it really compelling also i like that you lowered the blacks in the background and it just like made your subject really stand out mm -hmm. i'm i'm wondering if you could have like hmm, it could be level but i don't want to cut into your photo but do you see the water line here in the middle that would be level yeah you know i feel like uh, composing around the, the reflections in these photos is it, it's overrated. I think I'd rather see more negative space above the subject and have it more centered than to have more of that reflection in. You might even try bringing it into Photoshop and expanding the canvas and using generative fill to fill it in. I think that might make. I've it a stronger also shot. found as a person who really wants to get the reflections in there, it can often ruin the composition of the photo. And so I'm not saying the reflections wrong to include, but. It's, sometimes it can ruin the photo to try to include the whole thing. We need to re-import, and we did not get through many of these pictures at all. So we'll look at... A, We're chatting we'll do, today. We'll do turbo oh. mode here. This shot, the low contrast, totally works. Fantastic. Uh, let's see what else catches our eye. This, Whoa. nice and tight. I Pick. love it. Whoa. Oh my gosh. I want to get pictures of these. Pick. Yeah, puffins are great. Oh, you didn't include your name you or your watermark. How do I know you? I did it. No. You have to include your name and your watermark. Oh my gosh, a lizard? We just don't see that very often. Oh, you know what they did? It's just that we're in library mode instead of develop. Oh. And it's showing something different. Sorry, Fiona. It's beautiful. Puffin portrait, Wales, UK. <gasps> I want to go. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think it's actually really relevant that we scroll through the thumbnails and pick the ones that catch our okay. eye because that's what modern photography is, right? Like Whoa. we're in places like Instagram where people see a very small version of it and then they explode further. The use of negative space here, absolutely fantastic. Or you could crop it vertical four by five and it would still work. Beautiful shot, Christoph. <laughs> Christoph. <laughs> wow. All your photos are so amazing. We need to make this show eight hours long. And in the rain, that is so key. Like if it's raining or snowing, that's the most uncomfortable time to go out, but that is definitely the most interesting time to go out. And if you look at my portfolio at northupphotography.com, you'll see several of my wildlife shots are in the rain and snow. 
And you'll see mine or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the nice, gorgeous Whoa. color combinations here. Is this a, a night heron or a black heron? We see maybe them, a tricolor. Oh, you're right, tricolor. Yeah, that's really beautiful. We don't see them that often. I will excited. say, um, sometimes when you're surrounded by green, you get a green cast on everything, and so I'll select the subject and correct the color balance a little bit on the subject. Yeah. I'm going to do that because I think that will be good for everyone to see for their photos. And hopefully I don't screw it up since I made a pretty big deal out of it. So I selected the subject and then I'm going to take the green out by just making it magenta a little bit. And it helps also zoom in on something white. Yeah, this is like more like what your eyes do naturally. Our eyes have some auto white balance that sort of like pulls out color cast. I feel like, like not our eyes, but our brain. Yeah, and it's subtle, but you can see it just kind of brightens it up and makes it stand out a little bit. Okay. Okay, I'm going to re-import. Wait, oh, hold on. Okay, you can look at one more picture. Look at the grid. Pick your very favorite picture out of the last, like, 300 pictures submitted oh before the show. And then we'll re-import. Oh, my gosh. I heard someone say I was really partial to dogs. And there. no dog pictures. We're talking wildlife here, okay? Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I almost picked the dog. I know, oh, I know well, what you were doing. But while, while you guys are scrolling, I want to bring something up <clears throat> that people are having a little bit of a discussion about. John Drummond asked, what is the best light for wildlife photography? Uh, some people had said, or somebody had said, slightly overcast was their ideal conditions. But what are your ideal conditions for wildlife photography? I don't like Front lighting, like a sunrise or sunset. I think that direct low warm light is the most flattering. What do you think, Chels? I also like um, the low warm light, but I like dappled light. And maybe you've seen on my social media, I have um, like a heron and it's just lit up in the light and then the whole background's black. I like dramatic lighting because I think it's different. Like flat lighting is interesting because then, you know, everything's exposed nicely, but I often don't get the drama and the detail that I want. So like low direct light, it's good for me. Uh, I picked this picture because it has a lot of personality. The, the, well, this picture is fantastic, right? It's, it's about the moment. Is it the, real? So cute. Well, I hope it's real. Yeah, this, I'm going to call you Peter. This picture is fantastic. I'm I absolutely call love you it. you Peter. Well, okay, would you please pronounce this name? Obviously, it's Piotr. <laughs> Piotr. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm so going to read sorry. for it. You can discuss Peter <laughs> or Piotr. <laughs> please tell us why we're dumb. <laughs> How you actually say it. Okay. I, I'd like to take a moment to thank Pellegrino Seltzer, who is not our sponsor, but I just really like it. Oh, you really take it easy there, Chelsea. <laughs> I just always act this ridiculous. Okay. Uh, we had another topic of discussion, but I can't you remember want to go back to the slides? what it is. Yeah. Okay. There's Frank. We're not talking about Frank. Okay, we talked about that. Oh, I was going to ask you all your best wildlife photo tips. So, obviously, you're all really good at it. So, if you have tips to share with other people, I'd really like to hear them. Maybe it's something that we should be teaching that we haven't yet. You know, there are things we overlook, so if you have something for us or other people in the chat, share it. Now's the time. Give us your secret. Frank, you got a non-obvious tip? Sorry to put you on the spot. We give Frank no Frank, preparation. Frank, quick! Um, best wildlife tips. I, I think maybe dressing properly and um, being extremely quiet might be very overrated. Um, a quick little story about me. Um, I hung an owl box at my father's house years ago. They ended up using it, barred owls, and had three babies. I made a really cool documentary about it. But w when, when you approach them, you have to approach them almost like you're one of them. You want to go in there very quietly. I used to wear the same thing in front of them all the time. Uh, and just... You just got to kind of blend in with wildlife when you're doing it. That's I would love to know how that uh, the person got the photo of that hawk with the mouse in its mouth. Yeah. It was like so close to that. Or even the one with the squirrel on the ground. They were mm -hmm. so close to them. I'm curious to know if they were in a blind or, or how they got so close. But I think just uh, blending in or even as much as just hiding behind a tree is, is enough to get a, a decent shot. I mean, we do a lot of wildlife photography and, and sometimes you get lucky like Chelsea did with that kingfisher that flew by. And you could also go out and do everything you're supposed to and not come back with, with anything. And I think getting out early in the morning is probably the best tip. I'm not much of a morning person, so I don't do much of that, but those would be my tips. 
um, you're, I will say you're also very good at just keeping an eye out for activity because so many times you've been like, oh, I was driving to work and I saw this den of uh, foxes, so now I drive by every day. And you're really good at spotting stuff like that. And um, relationships are important too because Frank will see a bird or a fox somewhere and he'll be like, hey guys, here's a pin. And drop it on Google Maps. Like, see if you can chase this animal down. Yeah, no Frank. And when no Frank. No but Frank. we kind of did the same. We we're like, hey, this cove next to our house is crazy with eagles and osprey now. Like, let's meet up. And when you start to know other wildlife photographers or just birders or animal nuts, they will call you and they'll say, hey, this thing is going on, and you can get there. You know what my tip is? Is I act like a deer. I, you are so creepy with the deer because you're so good at it. We had a deer in our backyard and she crept out there doing a deer impression to the point where you could touch the deer if you I wanted to. I touched the deer. You know, the thing is, predators look at things directly and creep. And this is the same way that I keep coyotes out of our yard because we have small dogs. If you make direct, direct eye contact and act like a creepy predator, you scare animals. If you act like a grazer, you never walk directly towards them. You're always acting like you're interested in trees or grass. You can sneak a picture. You're interested in a flower. If you are not a predator, you're not interested in animals. So it's kind of like pretending you're not interested while getting closer. And I can get close enough to touch stuff, <laughs> which freaks out Tony, apparently. Act like a deer. Deer can be a little scary. Well, they can, because they could actually do that hoofy thing and kill you. But luckily, I hasn't happened yet. Let's look at some pictures. This is Oliver Lack's picture, and there's something hypnotic about it, and I, I don't know, it feels a little wide angle. It feels very intimate. This is an amazing photo, but yeah. also, is it scaring you guys? Like it's gonna steal from you, or? No, definitely, I feel a little a little threatened. It's not acting like a deer. Because it's, it's like leaning forward, and it's the intensity of the expression, right? Five stars in a pic, it's- Yeah, and fantastic. You also edited this artfully, like, the blues of the ocean, I can tell that you made them a little tiny bit teal, and it's a little bit golden in the foreground. It's just very pretty. You did a good job. I'm wondering if we could just remove this. I like it. How good? No. I'm mistaken. How good is the AI going to be? It's Let's not going to be good. I'm warning you. Uh, oh. No, <laughs> you're right. That was not good. Pho Photoshop generative <laughs> AI is so good. Excuse me. And Lightroom still has a ways to go. Okay, I I need more contrast in this. See, there's no whites. I got to see a little bit of white. You're you're just wasting that dynamic range. You got to use a little bit more of it, and that might be too much. Um, I wonder if you could have knelt down just a little bit without getting any grasses in the way. But overall, beautiful shot, nice and centered, and it would work well with a horizontal, uh, with a vertical crop, rather. Yeah, that's up, Frank. I'll chime in on that one. He shot that with a 70 to, uh, 70 to 200, so there's another one that's oh God, super that's close. You are, how are you spotting all the stuff when you're over there just dealing with chaos? You're amazing <laughs> me. Well, Chelsea gets her deer photos with a 16 millimeter. Yep. <laughs> just kidding. She gets selfies with them, arm right around it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love, okay, you're definitely low. Are you in the water? What is happening with that foreground? Is it like ice or? I'm, I'm going to just level the horizon a little bit. Wait, what's going on? I, I, I am, I've never seen a picture like this either. Like I'm captivated by it. There's a massive amount of negative space so in there. Confused. It's at 1 60th of a second with an X-T1, which was not the best wildlife camera. Well, but really compelling you know shot. What, Tony? The mood here is gorgeous. The colors are beautiful. Look at this little scene. This is pretty on its own right here. Like you could crop this and have a second picture. Yeah, for the record, I'm not being critical and say it's not the best wildlife camera. It's a compliment. It's a like, compliment that <laughs> the best wildlife photographers get stuff done with terrible cameras. True. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is spooky. What's going on with this guy? He seems upset. Is this spot color? I wouldn't go accusing him of anything. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I just did. It's been years since you got mad about spot color. <laughs> At least four years. I wasn't mad. I was just curious. I I love the intensity. It's very spooky. I think you could even go vertical with the crop if you wanted yeah, to make it. Um, I think that would work better. If you wanted to make it really scary. <clears throat> Sorry, got a tickle. All right, let's see here. Wow, cropping's so much fun. 
Y'all should try it. <laughs> Look. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. Sam, ba Sam the Bam. I like that. I like the little stealth fighter bodies. Like they just form yes. little bullets in the wind. They're like little UFOs. That's cool. I like that it's just different and simple. And... Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, Speaking of the impact of, of wide angles, it, it's always better to get closer. Like we see so many highly compressed photos with 600, 800 millimeter lenses. Multiple things. Get close. Like, wow. Multiple things make this photo good. So, first of all, being wide angle made lines in the clouds. So you can see it's kind mm -hmm. of like a burst that is framing the elephant. And then making it wide angle is creating interesting lines with the elephant. You have the trunk coming towards you. And then you also have really beautiful color contrast. Green in the foreground, the blue sky, and then, you know, this tannish brown color. All the colors are working. The composition's working. Pick. Sam gets a pick. <gasps> oh, Kingfisher. They know about us. Crop contrast, up. right. You can't see the eye because the eye is too dark. So we got to raise those shadows. Do you, you want to say something, Frank? I was going to say exactly what you said that's a it's, it's a great composition of a photo, but the most important thing that you can get out of a photo of any kind of animal is the is the eye. You need yeah. to be able to see the eye. So next time, maybe some settings, maybe a different time of day. I know it's so hard to predict where they're going to be, but just always get that. Make sure you can see that eye in the photo. Yeah, you really want the sun and the wind behind you. Can I tell you guys something? A secret? Yeah. And... Please don't judge me, but I have drawn in a catch light before. And I don't, I'm guessing other people have done this, but you can take this and you can just put the exposure all the way up sometimes. Wow, there's nothing there. There's no information there. Yeah, it's there. just literal black. How oh, there he, you go. How does he have a black hole where his eye should be? But anyway, if it's not so far gone, you can sometimes draw in a catch light to just give it a little more interest. Well, even that helped a lot. And then it just looks like he has an eyeball, but... Yeah, it's just human. We're just so used... So, we're so Eye cute. contact is so important to humans, I hear. This is cute. I think this is one of those times when including the reflection didn't do the composition any favors. Yeah, I think it's overrated. But I do think that, you know, cropping in, it looks cute. Oh my, my God. people! This is dreamy, right? Hey, how? What kind of deer is this? Just a baby? I don't know. Why is it so beautiful? I yeah. I wonder if it has like a ton of noise reduction or something. It, it does seem just dreamy. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. I wish we had your camera setting. I'm going to add color contrast by selecting the subject and then warming it up and adding some magenta. Like I, this isn't an unrealistic color for a deer. And I'm also going to add a little bit of exposure to the deer. And then I'm going to select the background, which is really beautiful and creamy. And I'm also going to raise the whites on that. And just... Oh, I wanted to make the background darker. But yeah, I think you could increase the saturation on it too. You want some saturation? Yeah. And I think that that just adds a little contrast color contrast. I think I went a little too far, to be honest, to critique my own edits, but you can just see now you have the orange of the deer and the green of the background, and it, it gives it some pop. It's a little lighter on the subject. I'm going to give you a pic that's so cute and beautiful. All right. Do we have any other questions, comments? Where are we meeting? We're doing a meetup. Yeah, there was, oh, I might have already said it already, but uh, somebody from New Jersey, it was John Resto, says he's coming up from New Jersey if, uh, if you do a photo walk. And the elephant photo was getting some chatter, and from, taken was, photo was taken by Sam. He said that was on a Z7 shot at 12 millimeters with that elephant. So oh, he, was, okay. he, was, he was close to that. Okay, here I was trying to brag about touching a deer in my backyard, and Sam is friends with an elephant, apparently. <laughs> All right, this is Tony's favorite animal, and it is a red panda. It, it is scientifically the cutest animal. It's, look at look at it. Look at his. You can see his little tongue. Let's <laughs> change the white balance and just warm it up a little bit because it's very cool from being in shadow. Yeah. Oh, I went too far. I tend to go too far, and we'll just see. That is so cute. I give you a pick for cuteness. Yeah. 
a not, you don't often see snake pictures in wildlife, but I like that you included all of this negative space to show that he's coiled up or she's coiled up. And uh, it's, it's a cute one. It's, it's got those cute round eyes. Nice. Oh, he does have a fish. I thought he didn't have a fish. I was about to lecture you and be like, you just got to keep shooting, actually, until you get Sony. a fish. But he has a fish. He has a fish and a bracelet. Yeah. He's got it all. The background... See, it's It's not day. your fault. Yeah. Be, but the background, you know, is gray rocks. And if you had some trees or something, it, it could be better. And you can also, you could help that again by just selecting the background and, and lowering this exposure a little bit. Um... But yeah, that's nice. Oh, they fight a lot, don't they? So here, speaking of lighting, I think you captured a very cool moment. Um, you are shooting this at f6.3. That, I don't know, maybe... Yeah, that's, that's that was your open. only choice. Yeah. Um, but if you had gotten the light in their face, they would have been lit up and there would have been a more subject separation. So it's hard. You have to position yourself so that the light is in their face. Yeah, and... I, you might have been low, but get as low as you can here. Like have your lens resting on those rocks. Oh, but and they, that would just show more depth. They couldn't have, have done that because the water's there, so they would have had to be a sea creature <laughs> or in a boat to do that. Oh, two can. Two can. Gorgeous colors from Joe. Let's crop it. Okay. Yeah, it does need a crop. Joe, you're at ISO eight thousand and one six fortieth. You could definitely do this. Uh, you could do this at 1 100th, no problem. You could probably do it at 1 60th, no problem. That gets you a much cleaner image. Oh. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is, this is great. Um, you want to crop it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I was also going to just cool off the background a tiny little bit. But, wow, that's so pretty. Yeah. I, I definitely had this happen with zooms. I'm not good at wildlife zooms. I usually use primes. You're at 552 millimeters, and I know you must be kicking yourself that you didn't go all the way into 600, but you're tracking a fast-moving animal like that. It must have been hard to keep it in the frame at all. I, I get it, but make sure you use that full length. It's, it's easy nice. here in the cheap seats. It's easy. Like, you need to zoom in all the way. Our out. job's easy. We're like, yeah, get, get closer than 12 millimeters with that elephant. <laughs> Look at this. Michael Kelly. This is... I like that you ha you kept the background dark. You have a lot of subject separation. The light is nice. No, but I, I think we need to raise the shadows because it feels too moody. It feels too, like, looming, right? No. What? Okay. Incorrect. <laughs> Five stars in a pick. I love this one. Oh, man. The mood on this is fantastic. Yeah, I like... Is, this is... Denoised. Right. Hector said he denoised it. Good work. Denoise is valid. That's a good technique. Z570 to 200. One one thousandths, that's already pretty slow. I can't complain about that. Yeah. 70 to 200. Must be Leslie. Oh my goodness. Let's zoom more and see what's happening here. It's got a little tiny snake or something? Oh, a frog. frog. Wow. That is, that's excellent. I would crop. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not seeing a theme, it's that we are very crappy. Cropping is more important than ever because most people are looking at these pictures on their phones, right? They got little screens. It's not like you're making a huge print. We used to be looking at everything on our like 20 inch monitors. Screens get smaller and smaller. Attention spans get shorter and shorter. You got to just show people the good part of the picture. Well, unless it's a print, sometimes things work in, in a wider crop if it's in a bigger yeah. format. Um, but I will say when I crop, I try to keep things like follow the rule of thirds sometimes or the rules of negative space. So I'm keeping the bird in the upper third and then this stuff in the lower third and that's how I'm balancing, choosing to balance the composition. Let's see. A little I like songbird singing. chirping. That's cute. Yeah, I like that you caught the moment when they're singing. I'll return it home. All in. I like, I, I like that you captured this moment. I am seeing maybe this is like a little vignette in the background. Let's try to select that background and see if we can make it a little bit crisper. I gotta say, I've taken uh, 20,000 pictures of great blue herons, but I've never seen them at the nest like that. I, I know Have where you? there's a place near us where there's a bunch of nests. Oh, really? I don't know if we could access it, though. Mm. But, yeah, I haven't seen this in person, but it's really cool. You get a pic just for capturing a moment that I've never seen before. Yeah. 
Oh, a little squirrel. Oh, that is so naturey. I like that. Gems. A little damselfly. Yeah. Um, very cute. You got really low. Oh, that's an. Very close picture with a bald eagle. That's at a hundred millimeters. That must have been actually scary. Are you? How did you okay? even frame that, Jeff? A hundred millimeters. How are they getting so close? With an R seven, so like a hundred and sixty millimeter equivalent. This is but his, that's very close. This is his pet bald eagle. <laughs> I would. But you can see the impact of not being super telephoto. Like everything just feels so much more three D, so much more intimate. It's just it's really hard to get that close. Wow. Oh, these guys are really cute. Get to know nature. Oh, that's very sweet. I like the composition. I think you cropped in nice and tight. There's a little bit of storytelling. I feel like it's the, the juveniles with the mom or the dad. Mm -hmm. um, and good color contrast. So I think you did a good job. Get that shutter speed down. Yeah, what's the shutter speed? One one thousand. Well, because like, you probably wanted them to fly. But if they're perched and you're in shutter priority, you can really quickly lower it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so dark though. Bear in Romania. I'm really scared. <laughs> I just listened to... Well, that's at 320 millimeters. Only 500 millimeter equivalent. But that's... That is scary. Yeah. And he's, he, he's aware of you. Don't get closer. Is I, that a... I respect that you Wait, were that... shooting and not running. But it's not... <laughs> Maybe. Is it a grizzly or? I, I don't know what bears they have in Romania. I don't know about bears, I'm sorry. Lucas Reed, a bluebird. I like um, that you got it to perch on something really pretty. I would edit out this. I don't know what this is at the top. Do you? No. But you could select it better in Photoshop if you have that and just do like content aware fill with the sky and it would clean up the composition. Oh, and you got sensor dust too. You got to fix that sensor dust. Well, we can't judge that, Lucas, because we always have sensor dust. That's true. All right, do we have any questions or comments? Um, not a whole lot. People are, are chatting. Uh, they're saying that that's a European brown bear that just went by. I, I thought for sure it was a grizzly. I don't know my bears, but that thing why I give the person a lot of credit for getting in there and, and getting that shot. Well, there was one thing that I did want to mention was on s most of the past photos, like the past 10 of them that we just saw go by, a lot of them have beautiful depth of field. The one that st uh, struck me the most was the one with the bird that was on the reed there getting the dragonfly in its oh, mouth. Or yeah. It's really always um, very like critical if you're looking for a real beautiful photo, I think, to select a nice background for let's say for instance if you were on the wrong side of that and you've got some woods behind you and you're gonna have a lot of clutter that's there but if you can just rotate 90 degrees or 180 degrees and keep that uh you know space in between your sub you or your subject and and what's behind there you can get a beautiful even at 6.3 or 7.1 some of those photos were you can still get beautiful depth of field on those photos and i, I noticed that uh, quite a bit uh, out of the last 10 photos or so yeah i think that's solid all-around advice for photography that your background is as important as your subject so yeah. you have to make that work and speaking of melissa morris took this beautiful picture of an owl um and the background is I, I can see what it is. It's like, you know, a marsh and the sky and it's beautiful, but it's blurred out. So we get that pop and the subject separation. I'm going to give it a pick. Yeah. And we have that sunrise or sunset lighting, like the sun is low in the sky. So the bird is well illuminated and we see the catch light in the eye as well as the background. It, the gorgeous picture, Melissa. Let's scroll through. We just a few minutes left. Whoa. Oh, what is, what? is this AI or something? What is, is this? It was like an ad. For like a cologne. Wait, is that can't be real. It's not real. Let's zoom in more. This person got us really wondering. I don't know. I mean, it's got depth of field on the whiskers there. It it's, looks like a real picture to me. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, Pascal. And it's got some like stray hairs and stuff. Like it's a little messy. I don't know what the story is. Maybe it's a pet or something, but that's an amazing photo regardless. I, it can't be real. It's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's. I think we have a couple more left. Yeah, this one's also really beautiful. I love this golden sun. 
I mean, I mean, I give that a pick. Yeah, that's a great job. And the background's great too. Look mm -hmm. at these layers here. This is what makes the composition is it has depth. The foreground is close, and then you have a background and then another one. So I know it's rolling hills, which makes it beautiful. And having that depth in those layers are important for making a dynamic photo. This is funny. I feel like oh, what you got, Frank? I'm going to chime in real quick. Uh, Pascal is in the chat here. He says that's not AI. He shot it at 400 millimeters at 2.8. And, yeah, yeah uh, I'm sure he'll chime in. And, and let me ask you, uh, you guys, a question. Somebody had asked um, Richard Ellingworth, full frame or APS-C for wildlife? I know both have their own advantages, but can you guys chime in on what you think of that? I, I It's definitely full frame if you have the budget. If you have a budget for a full frame, high megapixel camera, D850, A1, Z8, and good Z9, lenses. R5, and good lenses. The system yeah. is what's really important. So if you can get full frame and it's a high megapixel camera and you can also get the lens that's going to utilize the resolution, full frame. But if you don't have that option, you can get a, a system APS-C that's going to work really well and get you that extra reach. Yeah. With full frame, you'll often end up using a teleconverter to get similar reach. But the nice thing about full frame is you can take off that teleconverter. You have a wider angle of view. And then later you could crop down in post. And that's really useful if you're tracking a fast moving bird. It, having that wider angle of view just makes that so much easier to keep that animal in the frame when it's moving fast. So I also went back to Pascal's photo to give it five stars and a pick. Because if your photo is so good, we think it's fake, then I don't know. Do you want an award? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I wish I knew more of the story. It's just, it's so perfect. It is so perfect. We've pretty much gone through all the photos that people submitted during the the live show and that's why it's good to tune in live because we get through more of the photos okay well we have some other things to cover because i have to tell people our subject for next week oh right i'll go back to the slideshow for you thank you so oh well first of all i wanted to highlight a stunner of the week and that is john overbaugh and yay, so john. yay john so when people buy our book stunning digital photography they get access to a group on facebook where people critique your photos and they share comments and things like that and i just noticed that not only did john have a really beautiful on theme photo but he was very generous with his time sharing comments and information about the photo so thank you john for being a good stunner and for sharing your photos with us and for commenting and then also next week's theme january 25th is going to be people so that could be portraits or anything where people are highlighted in the photo. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures. I saw some of you in the chat before the show started saying you wish it wasn't wildlife and it was people. So good news for you. And you'll have to wait until we update, update the submit page to submit those photos. Uh, and you'll go to sdp.io slash submit and do that. And once again, I just wanted to remind you that if you want to learn how to use Flash, we have our Flash guide for sale which I'm now realizing was probably a terrible idea to do on a wildlife show. So, <laughs> great. I've used Flash on some wildlife photos. So great. So great for me. I'm learning. All right. Well, let's wrap it up with a few more questions, and then we can let Frank go home and stop this madness. <laughs> right. Uh... Let's see. Going back to Pascal again, he said that he shot that on A7-4 on his 400 28. He might have even chimed in a little bit more about the photo, but I didn't catch it just yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, too much right now. Uh, I'd have to catch up a little bit. So, um, okay, well, let's say yeah, I will, I will chime in and yeah, I will chime in and say the flash guide is fantastic. Uh, I was a person who was deathly afraid to use a flash on top of my camera for a long time until I finally went out to an event and started taking photos without one, came home and said, oh, these are not going to work. So flash is uh, invaluable if you're in a low light situation and you definitely want to know how to use it, uh, especially if you're going to be at an event where, that you're getting paid to cover. Yeah, because yeah, you don't control the light, right? People want to take a picture and it'll be like noon. And uh, it could be cloudy, it could be full sun, like you don't know what you're going to get, but you show up with a flash, you control it. You can make it look like a sunset or whatever you want. I also feel like people are always trying to buy a new body or like a $2,000 lens and you can get a $50 flash used and dramatically change your photos. So that's why we made this series. Um, yeah, and, and it's pretty inexpensive. <clears throat> and the flashes we use, a lot of them are super inexpensive. Like we spend some time with like a $20 flash because that can be it. 
that can be good enough. I think we teach, we help them buy them in the series too. But anyway, yeah. Northrop.photo and you can use the coupon live15 to get 15% off. I want to thank you all again so much for joining us. If you like the show and you want to keep it going, please share it with your friends. Tell them to join us and submit their photos. And I hope that we see you next week for our people show. So thanks again. Thank you, Frank, for helping us. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye. We need an outro.